Welcome back to the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease video series. Today we're talking about Mycobacterium tuberculosis, its pathogenesis, and clinical findings. First of all, the pathogenesis of tuberculosis starts with airborne droplets that contain Mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli, which enter the airway as they're breathed in. The way air flows into the lungs and the way lung anatomy works favors the deposition of the bacilli into the mid-lung zone. The immune system recognizes these foreign bacilli, and alveolar macrophages engulf the inhaled bacilli via phagocytosis. After phagocytosis, intracellular lysosomal enzymes within the macrophages are released into the vesicle containing the bacilli. In one possible scenario, lysosomal enzymes digest and destroy the tuberculosis bacilli. Thus, M. tuberculosis infection is cleared from the body. This means that sputum cultures and sputum smears on microscopy will be negative for M. tuberculosis bacilli. However, complex mechanisms can allow the bacilli to evade intracellular destruction by these macrophages. The macrophages then become infected with the bacilli and consequently release inflammatory cytokines such as TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-1b, interleukin-1b, and IL-6 or 8. These pro-inflammatory cytokines further activate and recruit neutrophils, T-lymphocytes, and monocytes to the site of the respiratory infection. The infected macrophages can travel to the thoracic lymph nodes via the lymphatic system, which results in immune cell proliferation within thoracic lymph nodes. This results in hyalur and paratracheal lymphadenopathy, which is seen on chest x-ray or CT chest. The tuberculosis bacilli can activate macrophage cell death programs. Once the macrophages are dead, the bacilli are then released and enter the lymphatic and circulatory system. This is how the bacilli can then spread to other regions of the body, leading to extrapulmonary tuberculosis, TB outside the lungs. Another possible outcome for the infected macrophages is that the macrophages will eventually form a granuloma to isolate and contain the bacilli to that area of the lung. This leads to what's called a GON focus, visible on chest x-ray. As part of the inflammatory process, recruited dendritic cells will phagocytose the M. tuberculosis bacilli and present its antigens to T cells via MHC class II receptors. The presented M. tuberculosis antigens sensitize CD4 T cells, which then release interferon gamma. This results in the positive tuberculin skin test and positive interferon gamma release assay. Interferon gamma can activate infected macrophages within the granuloma to more effectively destroy the intracellular bacilli via lysosomal enzymes. However, Brazilian bacilli within the granuloma may survive lysosomal enzymes and become dormant. This results in latent M. tuberculosis infection, which can often become reactivated when the immune system is suppressed, such as with TNF-alpha inhibitor medications. Another possible consequence from the presentation of tuberculosis antigens to T cells is that the T cell response can be delayed in an immunocompromised host, which prolongs the infection. In that case, the center of the granuloma will necrose and liquefy, allowing the bacilli to escape back into the airways. Bacilli re entering the host's airway allows transmission to happen via droplet and airborne methods to other hosts. The presence of bacteria in the airway will lead to a sputum culture and spear microscopy positive for M. tuberculosis. The presence of tuberculosis bacilli in the airway results in the accumulation of inflammatory mediators and necrotic tissue in the lung, irritating the airways, which leads to the chronic cough of tuberculosis. Active M. tuberculosis bacilli will also, via many complex and unclear mechanisms, result in fevers, night sweats, and weight loss, the classic symptoms of tuberculosis infection. And that's it for this fairly morbid topic, the pathogenesis and clinical findings of tuberculosis. If you learned something new from this video, then please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with others who may also be curious to know what exactly causes the clinical findings of tuberculosis. Thanks, and see you in the next Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease video.